In the last couple of videos, we have set up the Schrodinger equation for the Hadrian atom, and then we have talked about the possible quantum numbers uh, that solve that Schrodinger equation. Now we looked specifically at the solutions. Uh, and we have two of those, the energy and the wave function. In this video, we're going to be talking about uh, the energy. All right, so uh, even though we have three quantum numbers, it turns out that only the principal uh, quantum number is the one that affects the energy term. Okay, so the energy's solution uh, to that Schrodinger equation depend only on the principal quantum number and have values that look like this. Reduced mass, then charge, uh, atomic charge to the fourth, divided over eight, E naught squared, and then uh, C squared, which is the charge N squared, and then H squared. Okay, and again, uh, there's an infinite number of uh, values that go from zero, sorry, from one, all the way to infinity. All right, so again, all of these terms are known. That is, is the reduced mass, that is the um, uh, charge of the uh, the atomic charge or the uh, electronic charge to the fourth, okay, uh, permittivity for vacuum, Planck's constant. That simply is the number of protons that you have in the nucleus, that is the atomic number divided by the quantum number. All right, so it turns out that all of these things are actually constants. Okay, so that doesn't change uh, when you go from hydrogenic atom to hydrogenic atom. Okay, so if you go from H to helium plus, okay, both of those are hydrogenic atoms, that means that they can be captured by these, the energies of uh, the electrons can be captured by this expression, and then the only thing that would ch change would be that Z. Z will be equal to one for the hydrogen atom, two for the helium plus atom, three for the lithium two plus atom, and so forth. Anyways, these are, uh, this one change, that's a constant, and then we can actually uh, then rewrite this expression simply as the as follows. Minus a z squared over n squared. And where this a uh, is, is a constant value, we can call these either 13, 12 kilojoules per mole. Okay? Or if we want to do this on a per atom basis, this will be 2.18, 10 to the minus 18 joules. All right, so. Uh, what is um, uh, interesting about these um, uh, energy states? Well, uh, first of all, uh, as always, the energy is not zero. Okay, so there's always, uh, uh, even if you're at the zero Kelvin, uh, uh, there's always going to be some energy associated to that electron in the hydrogen atom. Okay, uh, the second thing that is interesting is that, of course, the energies are quantized, as we expect uh, to find. Okay, uh, something that is interesting is that all of these energies are actually negative. Okay, and a negative energy in this case is going to mean that uh, that electron is being attracted by the nucleus. Okay, an energy of zero would be a situation in which that electron is infinitely separated by the nucleus and there's no interaction between them. That would be an energy zero. As the electron gets closer and closer to the nucleus, uh, there's an attraction and that lowers the energy. That's why the energies become negative, right? You start at zero and then the energy gets lowered due to attraction then those energies have to be negative. Okay, so the larger the negative energy, uh, the larger the attraction, the more stable the electron is around the hydrogen atom. Okay, uh, also something that is interesting is that we can actually plot these energies uh, in an energy scale. Okay, so let me uh, erase this and then simply write the expression right here. P sub n is equal to minus uh, a z squared over n squared. Okay, so again, we can uh, write all of these uh, energies up here. And then we'll say that of the possible solutions that we have, this will be the first one, which is the 1, 0, 0 solution, which we also call the 1A solution. Then uh, the second one would be the 2, 0, 0 solution, which we also call the 2S. Okay, uh, and then there's a bunch of other solutions. Okay, those are the uh, 2, 1, and then uh, minus one, zero, or one solution, so that's why we call the 2P. Okay, something that is interesting is that the only difference between these uh, solutions is actually in the uh, L quantum number, okay, in the L and M sub L, okay? But there's no difference in the N quantum number. 2S and 2P, they have the same N quantum number. What that means is that the energies of the 2S and the 2P uh, uh, wave functions or states are actually going to be the same. These will be degenerate states in the case of the hydrogen atom. Okay, so there's no one that is lower than the other one. I tend to draw this uh, going, going downward, but again, the energies are kind of this, are exactly the same. 
specifically for the tourists and the two PR roles. Okay, so that's something that is also interesting. Now, as we move uh, 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 above, you will have here the three S, then you will have the three P solutions, and then you will also have the three D solutions. And again, all those are degenerate. Okay, but something that is interesting here is that uh, the energy spacing becomes uh, smaller as you actually move uh, higher in the uh, in the energy. Okay, so here's where the four ends will be, all of the solutions, and then five, and eventually you just get to uh, n is equal to infinity right here, uh, which will be an energy is equal to zero. Okay, so again, the uh, separation between energy states becomes increasingly smaller as you move up in the principal quantum number. Okay, so again, this is different from uh, other quantum systems that we have seen. For example, in the particle and 1D box model, what we actually saw is that the energies uh, become increasingly uh, more separated as you move up in energy. Okay, here is actually exactly uh, the opposite the opposite case. All right, so one of the things that we can actually do is test whether these uh, energies actually are sensible. We can try to do experiments in the Halley atom and see if we, we can somehow uh, uh, try to uh, see if this is actually accurate. Uh, the simplest experiment we can do is to measure the ionization energy of uh, the hydrogen atom, right? So that would be the energy that it takes for uh, that electron to be completely separated from the nucleus. Okay? And then we can uh, uh, compare that to uh, the difference in energy that we actually get here, uh, or the ionization energy that we get here from the uh, quantum mechanical uh, uh, solution uh, of the hydrogen atom, and then see if they agree. Right, the question is, well, how do we actually uh, calculate the ionization energy from these energy states? Well, so what's going to happen is that uh, under normal circumstances, okay, the electron, the Halley atom, is going to uh, be in the lowest energy state. And the lowest energy state would be uh, the 1s solution. Right, so again, that's where you expect the electron uh, to be most of the time. All right, uh, now uh, to eliminate uh, the electron, to completely remove it, what you actually have to do is add energy until uh, that energy gets completely uh, transformed into removing the electron. Okay, so essentially what you're actually doing is promoting the electron from the 1s solution to the n is equal to infinity solution. Because when you have an n is equal to infinity, you reach the dissociation limit and the electron uh, uh, goes away, the atom gets ionized. Okay, so the ionization energy then for us, what we call the uh, i.e. is simply going to be equal to the difference between the energy of state n is equal to infinity, which is again the limit where uh, the electron gets removed from the uh, atom, okay, minus the energy of where the electron is in the ground state, okay, where it normally is, which will be n is equal to 1. Ah, so let's see if we can calculate what this energy is. All right, and we come to the expression for the energy states and then the uh, energy of n is equal to infinity would be minus a z squared over infinity squared. Okay, that's the energy of s n is equal to infinity minus the energy of n is equal to one, which will be again the lowest energy state. Okay, so this is equal to minus a z squared over one squared. All right, so, um, this number, uh, this is zero, okay, because you're dividing over infinity square, and then you have that this is equal to uh, minus minus, okay, this is equal to plus a, and z squared, okay? But z squared, that is the nuclear charge, the atomic number, this is the Harding atom, so z is equal to one, that means that uh, for the Harding atom, the unitization energy is simply this a constant, which we have written as 13, 12 kilojoules per mole. And it turns out that when you actually do an experiment, the energy that you get is exactly 13, 12 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so this indicates, this lends credibility to the zone that equation to the energy solutions. Okay, and because the energy solutions are coupled to the wave functions, uh, uh, when we explain how the wave functions look like in the next video, then you can again uh, trust that those wave functions actually represent reality. Okay, because the energies that are coupled to those wave functions capture quantitative, uh, quantitatively uh, uh, the experiments of the ionization energy.